Hey, Dr. Lindsay and Wendy. Uh, it's journal time. We're going to review two articles briefly out of Dermatologic Surgery from September of 2021. And it seems like these, uh, when you and I discuss an article, it always generates about half of them think we're full of it and half of them think we're right on. But at least people start thinking about what, what the what, issues are. You, they can find that online, right? Yeah. You can, I think and read you, it? I think anybody can get the abstract. I'm not sure whether you can get the... Uh, real article uh, or oh, not. they can't. I don't know, Wendy. Come on. <laughs> article number one. Pay attention. Viagra and Cialis cause increased bleeding for cutaneous surgery. And the article is out of the University of Arkansas. And uh, they were, the title is this, um, those type things as a risk factor for excessive intraoperative bleeding during dermatologic surgery. And essentially, they found that with skin surgery and nosebleeds, that, uh, and I'm a near nose and throat doctor by training, and there's no, there's only, there's maybe two things worse than a nosebleed, but nosebleeds suck for everybody involved. Uh, but they had increased uh, bleeding with those kind of things if you're on daily ED medicines. And so we never really thought about it. I mean, we've got a lot of dudes that come in here that are my age, they get a hair transplant, and, and they, they say, is there any problem? And my answer always, until, no. until this article came out is, you know, I think it's probably out of your system by the next day, do whatever you want to do. Uh, and we haven't had any trouble. But I guess from here going forth, uh, it says that you probably had to lay off of it for a few days. Uh, the half-life is 17 and a half hours, and it could last up to 36 hours. And so their result, they are telling people to stay off of it for a bunch of days. Three days? Yeah. I think three days will be safe, right? Nobody knows. We haven't had any trouble, but uh, but then there's times when I'm trying to figure out and ask patients, did you take did you did you take aspirin? Did you do green tea? And all the answers have been no. I have never ever asked yeah. you. And it would be difficult. I mean, a lot of dudes aren't going to tell you. If they're yes, I had had a couple calls, and then they went strictly directly talk to Dr. Lindsay. And right. The questions are. They said that that old guy probably needs it too, so we'll ask him. That's what they probably. <laughs> So that's thing number one, uh, and I don't think the, the jury's in on it yet, but it's food for thought, and if you're coming here, I'm going to tell you to stay off of it for a couple of days uh, before and a couple of days after. Then the other interesting article out of this magazine is they're uh, treating scarring alopecia. You know, there's, there's male pattern baldness and female pattern baldness, and then a lot of hair loss is a type of uh, hair loss where your body attacks the hair cells or the skin around it, and you wind up with these shiny spots. And a good example is lichen plantar pilaris or frontal uh, frontal scarring alopecia. And, and hair transplants supposed are not supposed to work in those. I don't know why, but that's something that the, I learned at the, the doctor meetings back in the late 90s and the early 2000s. I don't think anybody's ever changed it. Uh, and so this article out of India uh, shows that they're putting grafts into scarring alopecia and about 75% of them are growing. Well, that ain't much different than probably a typical hair transplant on a guy with finer hair or a repair case. So, and so that, for it those, gives you hope. You know? it, that's what I was gonna say. So it is hope for those that when they call and they ask, you know, I have scarring alopecia, can I do a hair transplant? And when do you may or may not remember, but tomorrow we're taking stitches out of a guy that's got scarring alopecia that we did last week. That's right, yes. As a result oh, of this right. article. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because we did these fronts, uh, eight or nine years ago and he was happy he was fine right and then he came back he wanted to do a second hair transplant on a little spot that it was shiny and mm -hmm. you said that's a scarring alopecia and so he We're went to his dermatologist and got treated interestingly his dermatologist uh is interested in, in maybe some work done here too and uh i took close-up pictures of his scarring alopecia site before we made holes in him it looked like normal skin and the dude, the, the patient, knows that uh, it might come back and cause trouble, or it might not. And so this will be interesting. It'll be our first one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But so, again, the jury's not out on either one of these things, but I think if you've got scarring alopecia and you're interested in talking to your doctor and have a, you know, have a long and involved discussion that there's no guarantees with any hair transplant, but in particular if you're planting into scarring alopecia, it may not work. Maybe you want to do a little trial uh, transplant to see what happens. I think that gives a little bit of hope. So. Yeah. So just uh, if we can help you, give us a call.